Hi, welcome to the classes with Nadia. This video is about dissociation constant Ka or Kb. Dissociation constant is the quantitative measure of the strength of an acid or base in solution. Whenever we use dissociation constant, uh, we mention pKa values. pKa is the negative log of the acid dissociation constant and pKb is that of base. We usually use the term pKa in our calculations. pKa affects the absorption of drug in our body. Also, this is a characteristic of a compound. So, we can count it as a pre-formulatory profile. Its determination is done in pre-formulation studies under solubility analysis. Solubility analysis in pre-formulation studies focus on drug solvent systems that could occur at the time of delivery of drug candidate. Understanding the drug solubility profile and possible mechanisms of solubilization, mechanism, solubilization provide a basis for later formulation work. Pre-formulation solubility studies usually include determination of pKa, temperature dependence, pH solubility profile, solubility products, solubilization mechanisms, and rate of dissolution. The method used for solubility me measurements include HPLC, UV spectroscopy, fluorescent spectroscopy, and gas chromatography. Reverse HPLC provides an efficient and accurate means of collecting solubility data for most of the drugs. Okay, back to dissociation constant. pK denotes the dissociation constant of a drug. pK affects the absorption of a drug. So, determination of pK values is very important and for an ionizing drug, pKa can be altered by orders of magnitude with changing pH. Let's check the Henderson-Hasselbach equation which helps to estimate ionized and unionized drug concentration at a particular pH. Henderson-Hasselbach equation for acidic compounds is pH equals pKa plus log concentration of ionized drug divided by concentration of unionized drug and for basic compounds pH equals pKa plus log concentration of unionized drug divided by concentration of ionized drug. In these equations, when concentration of ionized and unionized drug becomes equal, the log terms reduces to zero as log 1 equals zero. Thus, pH equals pKa. So, we can, easy, uh, we can say that pKa is a characteristic of the compound or drug as I said earlier. Acidic drugs have lower pKa and basic drugs have higher pKa. Okay. Then, our GIT have a pH range from 1 to 8. For stomach, 1 to 3 and for intestine, 5 to 8. Based on this information, we can make some generalizations regarding ionization and absorption of drugs as predicted from pH partition hypothesis. And for um, generalizations for acidic drugs are, first one, very weak acidic drugs with pKa value greater than 8 are unionized at almost all pH values of GIT. So, their absorption is rapid and independent of GI pH. Second one is, moderately weak acidic drugs with pKa value in between 2.5 and 7.5 shows pH dependent absorption in GIT. Such drugs largely exist in unionized form in the acidic conditions of stomach. So, they get better absorbed from stomach. 
third one is stronger acidic drugs having pka less than 2.5 are very poorly absorbed as they are being ionized in the entire ph range of git and for basic drugs some generalizations are first one is like very weak acidic drugs very weak basic drugs having pk range less than 5 also exist as unionized form at all ph values of git and their absorption is rapid and ph independent second one is moderately weak basic drugs absorption which are having pka range 5 to 11 is ph dependent they are better absorbed from intestine where ph is relatively alkaline because at alkaline condition they largely exist in unionized form third one is strongly basic drugs with pka greater than 11 are poorly absorbed because they are in ionized form in the entire ph range of git these are some generalizations regarding the absorption of drug based on the ph value of the intestine and the nature of drug according to their pk values uh, and we know that uh, drugs in the form of unionized uh, unionized drugs in unionized form are absorbed from uh, our intestine or a stomach wherever in the git Uh, so these generalizations will help to predict the uh, absorption of drug from our git okay clear now let's check the determination of pk values there are a variety of methods to do this before performing uh, any of them buffer temperature ionic strength and co-solvent should be controlled because they affect pk value okay then method 1 is uv or visible spectroscopy through this method we can directly analyze the spectral shifts of dilute aqueous samples method 2 is potentiometric titrations this method demands high drug concentration samples to get a significant titration curve this causes precipitation of unionized ions that hinders the titration curve to solve this issue we can use co-solvents like methanol dimethyl sulfoxide and can maintain sufficient solubility for the unionized species also titration data can be extrapolated from titration data collected for various co-solvent concentrations but generally the use of co-solvent yields higher pk values for acids and lower values for bases than does pure water and uh, there there are many references available containing lists of pk values of various functional groups and organic molecules they are used for initial estimation for dissociation constants estimation of dissociation constants this video includes the essential things which you should know about dissociation constant a characteristic of compound thus one of the pre formulatory figure and thanks for watching bye